Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. You, the viewer, has spoken or have spoken. You want more of these types of videos. The overall feeling and sentiment behind your comments and the way you have engaged with the video I released yesterday on March the 7th has been overwhelming. And to be honest with you, as I mentioned in yesterday's video, I love doing these videos because much less preparation. We go in blind, just record what I typically do at the end of each trading day. Now, I did add a little bit more to what I usually do in yesterday's video. That video went for 46 minutes, but I have a look at charts at the end of each trading day. And at the each of at the end of each trading week, I have a look at way more charts. And I have a look at a plethora of charts over the next two days. I will not record that. Now, yesterday's video, the first thing I did is have a look at some of your comments. I'll just open it up. This is through YouTube Studio. For some reason, it starts off with the most recent comment and ends with the earliest comment or the, the first comment. I'm not going to go through all these comments. So yesterday's video, there's only four comments. This video, there's something like 13 or so comments. Uh, but yeah, the overwhelm overwhelming um, uh, feeling or sentiment is you really like this type of video, but you also like those in-depth videos on single companies. And my plan is to keep on doing those sort of videos. So it's going to be a balancing act for me in the future. Um, and I also like doing those in-depth videos on single companies because that's how you learn um, more about companies. Um, that's the absolute truth. And the old saying is to really know about something, teach it. And in a way, uh, one of the benefits of me doing this channel is I learn a lot more about individual companies. That is the honest truth. So I won't go through all these comments. So just thank you for everyone who wrote a comment here. Uh, the most liked comment was from Method341. That drone shield sell down was an absolute dog act by directors. I mean, what the heck? And then Saif Ali replied, DCA, dollar cost averaging, which sort of, yeah, maybe. If you really like the future of Drone Shield, dollar cost averaging, share price has fallen up. Not sure what it's done today. Um, and to be honest with you, I can understand the sentiment around thinking this is a dog act by directors. And to be honest with you, if I was a director of Drone Shield and if I was really excited about the future of the company, you couldn't tear my hands away from my holdings in this company. Um, but that's just the way I think. If the future is really bright, why would you sell half of your holdings right now? So I can definitely understand that sentiment and why some investors, some holders right now might be a little bit nervous about Drone Shield. But it doesn't mean the Drone Shield uh, growth story has come to an end. Um, so other great comments here. Uh, Bruce mentioned what on earth has happened to rectify technologies. It's not training right now. It hasn't been training for four months. Uh, and it's an absolute cluster. Well, can't swear. So the next bit of the word after cluster, I can't say that word. But the whole board, except for one director, was overthrown. They all left. I think they all resigned, which in itself is a really big concern. And no, not much word since then. They did release the half-year report, and that was not filled with much promise. And I think if they get back to trading, if they get back to trading, share price would absolutely collapse. I'd say the share price would be down 50 to 75%, if not more than that. So bad news, possibly for rectified technologies, unless they get back to trading after things have turned around in the underlying um, business. Uh, and the last mention here, last comment, that's showbiz. I forgot to mention SXE because I actually wrote an initial comment. Uh, SXE, SXE is Southern Cross Electrical Engineering. It's not Southern Cross Entertainment, it's Southern Cross Electrical Engineering, SCEE. -E. I'm pretty sure I have that right. I've been looking at buying this stock for some years with its healthy frank dividend. Would love your longer term for you. I know nothing much about Southern Cross Engineering. Um, I'll write that down. Look at the half yearly. I could do it right now because I have a feeling the rest of this video is going to be quite short. So let's have a look at Southern Cross Engineering. Ah, oh, up to 92 and a half cents today. I have a feeling, have a feeling the markup of this company 
I'm gonna have a guess. Uh, just below $200 million. Ah, oh, $243 million. It is the 661st biggest company on the ASX. And funny enough, the amount of companies on the ASX is dropping and has been dropping for 13 months, which might be concerned because if it keeps dropping, maybe in the future we won't have an ASX at all. And the reason why the amount of companies on the ASX is dropping is because there are more takeovers than companies IPOing. That could change because it does look like the Australian market has just moved into a bull run, perhaps. Uh, so what I might do with Southern Cross Electrical Engineering, I'd say the company's margins are quite low. Um, are quite low. So let's have a look at the report and we'll have a quick look at the investor presentation. So the first thing I'm going to do is have a look at the, we'll have a look at the um, profit loss statement. I'm pretty sure this company is profitable. They're a dividend paying company. So revenue, 255 million. Profit or gross profit, 37.7 million. So the company is existing on fairly low gross margins. So straight away, that says to me, this company um, is not more than likely not a high quality company. And in fact, the revenue was flat from last year, the previous corresponding period. Profit around about $10 million or just below $10 million. And profit has or is flat from last year as well. Earnings per share about 3.7. So assuming, and this is a really rough estimating, uh, double that. So you get about 7.5 earnings per share in a year. That means a company is existing on a fairly low, is existing right now on a fairly low um, PE ratio. So I'd suppose the PE ratio is probably about 12, 13. So let's have a look at see what it is in Comsec. PE ratio 12. Yeah. Dividend yield 5.5%. Yeah, okay. Uh typic and then we'll have a look. I was gonna say well, Typically, the first thing I typically do when I'm researching company is I have a look at the revenue, revenue history over time. Uh, you can do that fairly quickly just in just in Comsec. Let's have a look at the financial history, historical financials. Revenue has been increasing through time. This is revenue, but not revenue per share. I prefer revenue per share. Profit has been increasing over the past five years, six years or seven years, in fact. Uh, so things are moving in the right direction for this company. Seems like, um, but there are other things I'd like to see about this company. Cash flow. Actually, let's have a look at the balance sheet first. Uh, cash on hand has fallen. No much change in. Fair enough. Okay, the balance sheet is from the change from last uh, half year, so from the thirtieth of June to the thirty first of December. So no big changes in working capital that I can see here. And total equity uh, has not changed all that much. So let's have a look at cash flow statement. Okay, this is actually sort of where, actually this does, oh, this is where it does get a little bit interesting. So the some people um, favorite statement is statement of cash flows. And they love to look at operating cash flows. And if you only look at operating cash flows, you can get burned. And this is a really good example because last year, this company had operating cash flows of 36.3 million. This year, it's 7.7 .7 million. And I would say more than likely, this company would have had big changes in working capital from one year ago, not from June, but from one year ago, just based off this statement of cash flows. Now, possibly you might be able to see that from note 10. Uh, so let's have a look, note 10. This should tell us, so this is a reconciliation of cash flows from operating activities. This is from last December, so the previous corresponding period. So if you don't know what the reconciliation from cash flows is, it's fairly similar to the cash flow statements they produce in America. You start off at the profit of uh, income tax, and then you work your way down to get to the operating cash flows. So you can see all the steps uh, that lead to a discrepancy or difference between profit and operating cash flows. I love the reconciliation of cash flows from operating activities. Because for this company, they start at profit of 9.6 million and end at operating cash flow of 7.7 .7 million. Last year, they started at profit of 9.7 million and finished with operating cash flow of 36.3 million. Typically, if you see a big difference in the operating cash flow, more than likely, it's going to be changes in working capital. So we're talking about trade and other receivables, inventories, and trade and other payables. We can't look at the balance sheet in this regard. Sometimes you are able to do that because the balance sheet is going only back six months. This particular reconciliation goes back one year. 
And it's quite obvious what has happened to this company in the past year, all around change in trade and other receivables. Last year, it was positive 44.9 million. And when you see change in trade and other receivables positive, that's going to be beneficial for the cash flow in operations. That's why it was really high last year. This year, it's negative 3.1 million. So a big change in trade and other receivables from last year to this year. And when that is negative, that's actually going to be detrimental to the cash flow in operations. So that's why there's a big discrepancy in operating cash flow from last year to this year. And that's why operating cash flow is actually lower this year than profit, um, mostly because of change in trade and other receivables. However, change in income tax payable has uh, changed a fair bit from last year as well. A big change of about $13 million there. So it's, ha it's good to have a look at all the information. Don't just be reliant on one thing. Some people just look at the profit and that is it. That is really silly. I could also have a look at the presentation, but I'm not going to actually do that now. Yeah, I might do this in, in later in um, later today. Uh, da, da, da. So yeah, I just want to have a quick look to see how they're doing. Data center, oh, data centers, oh, oh. piqued my interest here. Uh, SXE or SCEE -E Group talking about data centers. Uh, Mm, mm, data centers. I'm going to have to have a closer look at this company just because of data centers. Western City Airport. What are they doing with Western City Airport? That's interesting as well. Oh, yeah. I'll have a closer look at uh, this company. What do you call them? Um, Southern Cross Electrical Engineering Group. Uh, the very fact that they just said data centers. Oh, hmm. I'm going to have to have a closer look. Let's have a look at the chart. Uh, da -da -da. Oh, here we are. Sorry, I was totally wrong area. Um, don't want to look at hydrogen. What's that? Hy lithium hydroxide. We will have a look at Southern Cross Electrical Engineering. Well, to be honest with you, the chart looks pretty nice. So, oh, yes, yes, yes. Chart looks pretty nice. What I'm looking here is for volume. So we started to say, actually, what we would first do is look at the weekly chart for Southern Cross. All right, so this company's been around for a while. This is sort of the chart you'd see for a non-high quality company. Uh, in fact, the share price high for this company was way back in 2008. And uh, the next high was in 2009. The next high was in 2012, actually 2013. The next high was 2012. The next high was right now. Uh, so we're talking about the last time the share price was this high was way back in 2014. We're, we're at about 10 year high for this company's share price. So the weekly chart did break out. So I put this horizontal line. So obviously I looked at this chart in the past and I put out, put this horizontal line, which would be a breakout. And this company broke out, probably broke out uh, in November last year. So let's have a look at the daily chart. So it tried to, it was this. I would call this a false breakout. Uh, so it broke out and then the company's share price fell on the 27th of September by well, it seems like that was way more than 2.55%. But I would say the confirmation of the breakout was on the 6th of November because uh, otherwise we saw that breakout tested in November and December. You can see the share price pull back to 82 cents. It tested 82 cents twice and has taken off. Uh, the share price has pulled back to about 86 cents and is now at 92 and a half cents. This chart looks pretty good. Uh, some really good volume coming in sept between September and November. That's actually a good sign, particularly when you compare that volume to what you were seeing uh, in the year previous. So some nice volume coming in. So there are some people, some institutions, more than likely fund managers, getting excited about this company. So for that person who introduced Southern Cross Engineer Engineering to me, that's showbiz. Thank you. You're just giving me a possible idea. At first, I was a bit Worry about this company. Then they mentioned data centers. And maybe it's that whole play around data centers this company has. Don't even know what they're doing with data centers, but that maybe is why the, the market is excited about Southern Cross Electrical Engineering right now. Okay. All right. So that's really I'm going to talk about when it comes to the, the video comments and looking at companies. Now we get to the whole crux. And this is what I do at the end of each trading day. Uh, and I go through the announcements that were released today. Well, I've already gone through the announcements that were released before trading began. And to be honest with you, 
there was nothing really exciting. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. Nothing too exciting. There was one or two interesting announcements. Okay. There was one here from Algora, Algora Pharmaceuticals. Their decode is 1AI, and they released an announcement um, titled Artificial Intelligence Platform Update. I have never heard of this company before. 1AI. They've probably changed the name, maybe. Nothing exciting on the chart. I would not trade this at all. Share price is one cent, markup 18.3 million. Uh, so at this point in time, uh, I'm not going to open up that uh, particular announcement, but it's got the buzzwords in it, doesn't it? Artificial intelligence and the TIG code has the bud letters AI in it. So Algora Pharmaceuticals, uh, maybe you have piqued the interest of someone out there. Did the interest, oh, the share price fell today. Okay, so this announcement didn't pique anyone's interest. Uh, Resolute Mining, all reserves in mineral resource statement, share price down 1.9%. Uh, Pacific Current Group, Pacific Current Group sale of GQG CDIs, share price up 3.3%. So none of these announcements really piqued my interest. Byron Energy Company Production, was there much buying? No. Uh, Point Terra, this was probably the most interesting announcement of the day. Point Terra has been in um, a suspension for a while because it seems like the ASX didn't like the way they stated this particular announcement. And let's just open up Point Terra. So Point Terra went into a suspension on the 20th of, of um, February. That was well over a week ago. Didn't realize they were being suspended for so long. The reason for their suspension was. Was it noted in this or was it the next announcement? But open both up, both up. Yeah, it was this one here. Uh, they failed to comply with a requirement from the ASX. Uh, the ASX wanted more specified information in regards to the material contract award. The whole reason they went into this particular trading halt. Uh, so they released this announcement today. Point Terra awarded contract from US energy utility customers. So, or customer, not customers. So obviously this uh, was approved by the ASX. And to be honest with you, apart from one number, it was fairly vague on information. Maybe the number they did give us, there was only one page, uh, awarded a contract that was worth $2.9 million. Uh, maybe that's all the market or the ASX wanted. Uh, but when do they get this money? Does it say here? Uh, the company expects to complete contract deliverables this year. The contract award is subject to normal commercial terms and conditions, including non-performance termination clauses. So maybe they will get the majority of this money in the coming year. So obviously, how did the market react? 12.5% higher. The high of the day was $0.07. Cents. So we did see a little bit of selling today with Point Terra. Let's have a look at Point Terra's chart. This is not a breakout. So one of the things I'm doing when I go through this process at the end of each training day is I'm looking for companies, charts, or just companies that are breaking out. And typically, they break out on positive news. And the other thing I'm looking for is high volume. Point error. Is this a breakout? It's not. It's not. Share price has been a long-term downtrend. It's fallen from 90 cents all the way down to 5.4 cents. Uh, and a bit of buying, or not buying, a bit of selling has come in today. We know a bit of saying it will come in because uh, there is a lot of resistance moving forward because a lot of shareholders have bought at higher prices in the past. They want to get out of this dog stock. And to be honest with you, if someone did call this a dog stock, I wouldn't push back all that hard. It has been a uh, disappointing performance from the company over the past few years. Some good volume come, has come through, but this is not a, a breakout. Uh, to achieve a breakout, the share price would have to get above uh, about 11 cents, 12 cents. Uh, in fact, even 25 cents to get above this other period here back in July when share price went on a big rally. Uh, yeah, anyway, so not a breakout for Point Terra, eh, which is to be expected. Uh, so other announcements, I have not had a look at other announcements that were released. Response to press speculation. What's happening to speculation with Remilius? Is this a potential takeover? Let's have a look. I did not see this. Announcement earlier. Corporate transaction with Corora. Okay. 
looks like Corora is listed on the Canadian exchange. I think maybe, I have no idea. But the market didn't get excited about that. Share price only up 1%. Uh, nothing else interesting here. Central Petroleum Limited did release the half year results. I had a quick look at that. Uh, this company is profitable. Let's, let's open it up. The company is profitable, generating revenue, that sort of thing. So this is a real company. Uh, so sales revenue increased uh, 20%, gross profit up 47%, underlying EBITDA X. So earnings for interest, taxation, depreciation, amortization, and exploration costs up 53%. Underlying EBIT up 122%. Positive, negative last year. Underlying EBITDA was negative last year. Now it's positive. Uh, underlying profit after tax, 64,000. Statutory profit after tax, 13.8 million. Net cash outflow from operations, 114,000. So the company is not operating cash flow positive. Wonder if the market liked it. Let's have a look. Not really. Ho oh, hum. Nothing exciting today. Lake Resources went into a trading hot. I'm pretty sure that's a cover raising. Pretty sure. And that might be it. I haven't had a look elsewhere. That's it. Paladin proposed consolidation of share capital. What's this? Well, obviously they're going to have, or they're consolidating their shares. So um, we can see what they want to do here. 10 to 1. So shares on issue will go from 3 billion to 300 million. And then there's also some share appreciation rights and unlisted performance rights. I'm not sure why they're doing it because the share price of Paladin is well over $1. And having 3 billion shares on issue when your share price is above $1 billion is not an issue. So that means the share price is going to be over $10 for Paladin. Maybe they want to raise a lot of money and increase the shares on issue. That's a possibility. Okay. So the next thing I usually do on these days is I go to market index. I have a look at top gainers and top losers. I might also have a look at the volume. Um, so what I'm looking for here is any sort of breakout or potential breakout. So we're looking at good performing companies. We're also looking at the turnover. We want really big turnover. And there's one strike. There's one that is really obvious right here. Virgin Money UK up 32.9%, turnover 63.6 million. I don't know what's happened here. I have a feeling this was an announcement that was released at the end of training yesterday. I I think I do remember this, yeah. But I didn't open it up. Joint statement, RE, potential cash acquisition. Now, to be honest with you, I don't really care about Virgin Money, so I'm not going to open up this particular uh, announcement. Um, let's have a look at whether this is a breakout. This could be a breakout, but if it, it is um, someone's acquiring this company, then I don't care. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Well, share price is right at this level. This is right at the really interesting technical level, the highs we saw back in 2021. Um, so is this an acquisition? Uh, is someone acquiring this company? I have no idea. Let's open up the announcement. So I went from, yeah, whatever. Okay, so the boards of directors of Nationwide Building Society and Virgin Money UK to announce that they have reached preliminary agreement on the terms of potential cash acquisition of Virgin Money by Nationwide. Yeah, this is an acquisition. And typically for acquisitions, I don't care. I just go away. If I was a shareholder in Virgin Money, I will be selling my shares in this company straight away. So don't care about this particular potential breakout because it's an acquisition. By doing it. Let's go back. Anything else interesting here? You'll notice some of these good performing companies had very low turnover. Uh, open learning, only $67,000 worth of shares traded. So we're looking at high turnover. Uh, nothing else. See, some of these companies increased by 20% on $160 worth of shares traded. One thing I wish Market Index had is sort of a filter. So you could filter out these low turnover companies. Um, so something else I do to sort of filter out those. Uh, is just look at market cap. So the best performing company today in terms of market cap, or, or the, yeah, well, yeah, it's weird to say it like that, was Meridian Energy, energy up 10.6%. Uh, Cooper Energy up 10%. Lindsay Australia, 7.5%. I didn't see any of these companies release announcements. Uh, Demerics up 9.1%. I did take some profits in that company, and the company has kept on running, which is sort of understandable. Um, Nothing else interesting here that I can see. They have Pointera. 
Now let's have a look at the worst performing companies. And nothing I really want to um, delve into a little bit deeper. Uh, so look at the two worst performing companies, turnover, $489 for Parabellum Resources and for one of the worst quality companies on the ASX, Quest Communications, down 21.2% on $462 worth of shares traded. A mark cap of that company is 1.41 million. I'm pretty sure I did a video on Quest Communications and I actually said, is this the worst company on the ASX? Other bad performing companies. Yesterday we had Australian Bond Exchange, the best performing company. Now it's one of the worst performing companies, but I can sort of ignore that. Wyckoff down 18.2%. Volume traded there was over 1 million. So we're going to have a just quick look at Wyckoff. See if anything interesting happened there today. No, nothing. Nothing that's piqued my interest. Uh, Hutchison down 16% on $116 worth. So today it was really quiet. You can just see it was really, really quiet just by these list of companies. Now we do it by market cap. Uh, we have Mazablast here down 7%. Uh, close the loop. Not sure why the share price of that company is dropping. Peatwood, Camplify, the market, medical development. Boring day. Today was boring. Okay. So let's have a look at some charts. Not uh, the markets. I'll do that on a Sunday. Let's have a look at some of my companies. Oh, a few of my companies were down. Now I took profits with Zip. So it's fine enough, I took profits with Zip and uh, today actually sort of is a fairly bearish day. I was getting a little, not nervous, but sort of the last few days were, we were seeing some sell signals that there were increase in supply of shares on the market with Zip. And I decided to sell almost on open today. Uh, so shares or the share price is down a, a little bit from when I sold. Um, and even if you look at the five minute chart, so I'd say a lot of traders are in this uh, the five minute chart starting to look uh, a little bit more bearish as well. So I sold out of zip. I also took profits was not completely. I should also mention this. I did not sell completely. I have maintained a little holding in zip. I've also maintained a little holding in email payments, but I did sell out my trading position in both companies and email payments is also down a little bit today. Uh, what did I Yeah, email. This is the five minute chart. The main reason uh, overall the other day I was thinking just because it is struggling to get above $1. It struggled today, finished at 99 and a half cents. I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, the share price pull back to say 80 cents, maybe even 90 cents. But I would be willing to trade this again if I see confirmation that the share price of this company gets above $1. That's what I'm looking for right now. So I could easily buy back into email payments within the next few days, the next few weeks, if I see a concerted push above $1. Uh, okay. Otherwise, oh, I sold, I completely sold out of Jurotech, so we can get rid of that. I did a bit of research last night and sold off. Judo Capital had a nice day today. It's really interesting. I had a lot of red, a lot of companies down today. And what I didn't do in this is I didn't go through the rest of the market. So yeah, the XJO up 1.1%, all odds up 1%, small odds only up 0.63%, tech up 0.95%, resources only up 0.24%. And it looks like our uh, mining companies had a bad day, but banks had a great day up 2% and the ASX 200 banks up 2.3%. So great news, the overvalued banks on the ASX right now are even more overvalued. Yes, Commonwealth Bank, Westpac, ANZ, and the other one, NAB, are all really overvalued in my opinion, particularly CBA, but don't ignore the charts for those companies. And Judo Bank, which I do own, or Judo Capital, I also owned uh, Bank of Queensland. That's not a nice little rally. So even though I think the banks are overvalued, I still am holding a few in my trading portfolio. I'm thinking about getting rid of Hatapult, but it hasn't fallen below $1.21. If it falls below that, I'll set out of my position. And 360 has been very volatile, look at that. Although, share price has finished at a high 
I closed at a high at $12.34. And I bought Digger Data yesterday, and that's up 2.41% today. Yay, dig it out. So what I'm going to do is over the next um, few hours is I'll go through these charts more closely, and then I'll go through some of my other uh, watch lists. In fact, I'll go through almost every single watch list here, particularly focusing on daily A, a looks, that sort of thing, uh, just to have a look and see if there's any companies close to breaking out. Also have a few screeners in here. So I look at the companies uh, that are three-month high, six-month high, and a one-year high, just to see if there's other other interesting companies. And the other thing I should do is have a look at Scott's, I was just about to say Scott Scans. Uh, have a look at Stock Scans. And the one I'm looking for here is Unusual Volume. Uh, I love Unusual Volume. Just to see if there's any company. I'll do this by market cap. NAB had an unusual volume today. Uh, Premier Vestas. Bank of Queensland had an unusual volume. So let's have a look at NAB. See if there was unusual volume today for NAB. Not really. I wouldn't classify that as unusual volume. And if I look at the chart, this is actually a really bullish chart. Uh, but last time the share price of National Australia Bank was this high was back in 2015. This is almost a nine-year high for a National Australia Bank. So I'm talking about these companies, these banks are becoming really overvalued, maybe not really overvalued, but a price earnings ratio of 15, I would never buy a NAB at a PE ratio of 15. I would buy this company at a PE ratio of about 10 or below 10. I don't know what the market is getting excited about these banks for, because in a low or decreasing interest rate environment, these banks don't benefit at all. Uh, in fact, their profit margins... Uh, interest margin, net interest margins are being really affected. Uh, but to be honest with you, oh, I I was thinking of trading the banks, buying down here, and I just thought, nah, they're overvalued. So that's the problem with having biases. If I was just trading the chart, I probably would have traded NAB, although I probably would have bought about $30 or so, and it's not up 10. That's up, actually up 15%. Oh, I could have done it, damn it. Okay. I still think banks are overvalued. You might disagree with me. Uh, dividend yield, 4.9%, not that high, to be honest with you. So the forward potential for returns from the banks are not going to be that high in the future because these banks aren't growing. And even the Commonwealth Bank CEO said they're not going to be growing all that much. In fact, moving forward, the story around Commonwealth Bank is how much more secure and safe it is than what it was in the past, but they're not going to be, to be growing all that much. In fact, there's also more competitors on the stage in regards to these banks, like Judo Capital, more competitors. And all these banks have been focused on mortgages or house loans in the past. They're not that diversified. Okay, anyway. So this is a lesson that sometimes you just should, should just trade the chart and the best potential or the really good breakout for Naples, National Australia Bank was there was the middle of December when the share price was $30. That was the breakout for National Australia Bank. Should have traded it. Anyway, so I've learned my lesson, but to be honest with you, there's a lot of trades, potential trades out there. And my favorite trade is on the back of good financial news. And to be honest with you, the banks aren't releasing any good financial news. They haven't released any good financial news for probably 10, 15, 20 years. Um, so in these sort of situations, these companies, you just trade the chart look at the chart and trade it anyway that's all i'm going to have for today's video uh if you want to leave a comment leave it in the comment section of the video otherwise i'm not a financial advisor if you do need financial advice make sure you seek out someone who's qualified and can speak to your own financial needs that's it for this video have a good day bye